All right, here we're going to review uh, very quickly the book Enigma of Reason, which really convinced me a while back when I read it. So the idea is that um, people think reasoning is there to help you make better decisions and come to better ideas. But then you have to kind of explain how we got this superpower that animals don't have. Like if we look uh, at animals, we don't see the any discernible evolutionary steps leading up to this incredible ability to, to do this, right? To do it consciously, to think consciously like this. And even if you accepted that we have this incredible ability that is nowhere to be found elsewhere in nature, you'd have to explain why it is so systematically flawed. So things like confirmation bias, you talk to people and they're all, always omitting stuff, exaggerating, distorting the truth, even to themselves when they're trying to come to better ideas, they're falling into all these uh, thinking distortions, um, biases, right? So it's like, if reasoning actually developed, actually evolved for the purpose of coming to better ideas and making better decisions, why is it that we're falling into these traps of thinking systematically, not even just as a mistake or like an error or a mutation or something, but systematically across the board, reasoning is like fundamentally flawed in these very predictable ways as studies after studies show. So the authors propose that we're seeing reasoning in its wrong function or in, in its wrong context. If you put reasoning back into the, its, its correct context of social of socializing, of discussions, conversations, then all these things make perfect sense. And so there, uh, they propose that the function of reasoning is actually to justify yourself and convince other people. Okay, and this this would have been necessary throughout our evolution because um, we we're a very uh, cooperative species, right? Like we we cooperate on large scale endeavors, and reasoning kind of is helpful when the trust isn't there, right? Then you have to give reasons as to why someone should side with you or uh, carry out a hunt with you or whatever, right? So yeah, the they propose the, the function of reasoning is to justify yourself and convince other people. And then if you see that as that function, then all these biases and everything make perfect sense. It's like, then yes, confirmation bias is going to help you justify yourself and convince others, distorting the truth, exaggerating, omitting things. All these are going to be helpful, right? And you look at reasoning and it's just, it's like, it's always, it's, it's lazy and it's um, biased, okay? It's biased because you overwhelmingly find justifications for your own point of view. And it's uh, lazy because you don't really spend the time or effort to evaluate the reasons you're offering up, okay? Those justifications you're offering up. And this, again, fits perfectly with when you put reasoning into its correct uh, niche of social like conversations, discussions, because then, yes, it pays for you to be kind of lazy in evaluating your own justifications and um, overwhelmingly finding justifications for your own points of view because you are trying to convince other people, right? Now, some added evidence for this, this view comes from the introspection illusion, which now I can't even remember if I talked about in this video. I don't think so. And uh, some other stuff I heard um, in my consciousness class a while back when I was doing that kind of reading. So let me offer up a couple of these things. The introspection illusion is that people can be fooled very easily as to what really caused them to do the things they do, okay? And studies after studies show this. The famous one, the most famous one that kind of was a seminal study on this was by a guy named Nisbet, a 19-something. I'll make a video on that in the future, but if I remember correctly in that study, people were choosing objects and they were giving all these reasons why they were choosing these objects, but they didn't know that they were actually choosing it because because they were uh, dominant, because those objects were easy for their dominant hand to pick up or something. Um, a, more, a study I remember more clearly right now is um, they would put people into rooms alone, and in some conditions they would put them with somebody else, okay? Now in the next room, a woman would give like a cry for help, something about her foot, like something fell on her foot. And in the, in the condition where people were alone in the room, they went to go help 70% of the time, okay? But in the condition where there was someone else in the room who did nothing, um, then they only went to go help 7% of the time, like 10 times less. But So this would be the bystander effect. It's like you see somebody else not doing anything, so you don't go do anything. Probably because you don't think it's a serious affair or maybe you're afraid of looking stupid in front of the other person. I don't know. But obviously the bystander effect is playing a causal role. But when they asked the, the participants like, okay, why didn't you go help? The bystander effect was not one of their causal explanations. They gave all sorts of other reasons that were adamant that this did not play a role, okay? So this is an example of the introspection illusion where you're actually kind of not so privy to your actual reasons for doing things, okay? And now, even if you look at reasons that pop up in your mind, 
they're kind of intuitions that just pop up fully fledged in your mind as conscious. You think uh, you're consciously aware of what, why you did something, but that's only the tip of the iceberg. Okay. So that's where the authors propose that uh, reasoning is kind of this module where you get these fully float, fully formed intuitions for the purpose of communicating to convince other people and justify yourself. But they're, they're actually just inferences about the actual reasons that made you do something. Okay. And if you see reasoning as just uh, inferences that are carried out automatically and unconsciously, and you're just being consciously aware of the tip of the iceberg, like an intuition why you did something, then that fits in very well with all the other inference modules that you see across nature. Like uh, even ants carry out very complex operations. Like they have a built-in compass, a built-in odometer. Desert ants can track their location. And that's a very complex task. Like sailors do it uh, through dead reckoning. Um, it's, it's a very complex task, but ants do it just automatically and unconsciously, right? And there's no reason to think that humans aren't also doing these complex tasks uh, like this as well, unconsciously and automatically. Because even if you look at stuff like perception, it's like, are we really conscious of perception, uh, this task? Before I even brought it to your attention, you probably weren't thinking, like, how am I actually perceiving the world? What operations is my mind carrying out? So yeah, all these things that I've put forward, and that book, um, they were really convincing to me and gave me a, a, a different idea of what reasoning could be for. Um, and it kind of fits better with all the evolutionary, evolutionary explanations, fits better with what animals are doing because we're also carrying out these inferences automatically and unconsciously, except that we have these uh, conscious intuitions about uh, why we're doing the things we're doing. But they are just intuitions. They are just inferences. And now I've picked up another book called The Opacity of Mind by... Peter Carruthers, and so far it's amazing. And this book actually came a lot before, a long time before the Enigma of Reason. And he also is making the argument that uh, we're really just using inferences. The only thing we were privy to is uh, sensory information, sensory data. The same thing. So even when you uh, gauge other people's minds, like the theory of mind or mind reading, you try and guess what's in other people's minds. All you have available uh, consciously is sensory data. And he argues that even with yourself, this is Peter Carruthers, by the way, that other book, even with yourself, all you're privy to is the sensory data. Although you have extra sensory data from inside your body, like interoception and stuff, but you're basically using that to make inferences about your other thoughts. Um, and I won't go too far into that book yet. I'll do a separate book review for that. So pick up this book, guys. It'll teach you, give you a different idea of how we think and why we fall into the uh, cognitive biases and errors that we do. All right.